Let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar titled Optimizing Heavy Equipment for Handling Bulk Materials with Adams and EDEM Co Simulation. My name is Ejun Fan. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Adams and EV5 at MSC Software. So, co presenting with me, we have Stephen Co. Stephen is from DEM Solutions. He is the engineering, engineering manager for a software called EDEM. Okay, to kickstart the presentation, we will uh, briefly talk about the application of multi-body dynamics in the heavy equipment industry. Um, to those of you who are not very familiar with Adams, we will give a very brief introduction. Then I will hand it over to Stephen, and Stephen will uh, introduce what is uh, EDEM and uh, why it is important to, um, in some, uh, when you are handling the bulk material, how this code simulation could uh, basically improve the accuracy of your of the prediction of your simulation, and um, also some of the benefits and application of uh, Adams and EDM code simulation. After the presentation, we will have a live demo. Basically, we will take you through both the EDM environment, and after the simulation, we will see some of the results in the Adams post processor. Okay. So first, um, what are the common applications of multi-body dynamics or atoms in heavy equipment industry? Well, here are some of the typical usages. For example, um, engineers use atoms to study the dynamic loads for different operating scenarios throughout the range of motion. So they can find the peak load for each, um, basically each operating, um, each duty cycle. And also, uh, they leverage atoms to perform the DOE, the design study analysis, and the optimization analysis. Um, basically, to find the best um, design for their uh, either component or their subsystem or system uh, configurations. Uh, you can also evaluate the system with control integration. Um, for example, you want to uh, predict the trajectory of uh, how you want to move the bucket, then you can probably, you probably want to know how that, uh, how your control algorithm works in a real physical environment. And that's when you want to couple your control algorithm with a multi-body dynamic solution to see how this uh, control logic works in the real uh, physical scenario. Uh, you also can perform some subsystem modeling, like the crane system for the, um, like the cable system for the crane, big crane equipment, or the gear train system or the transmission system in most of the heavy equipment. Um, you can also use atoms to help you conduct failure analysis. So you can either um, see some of the stress and strain results in the Adams post processor using Adams durability, or you can export the dynamic loads um, into either uh, ENCODE or MSC Fatigue or Natural Embedded Fatigue, any fatigue software, leveraging the accurate, um, what we say, the, the dyna dynamic loading for one duty cycle. And uh, based on that, you will be able to reliably uh, predict or conduct the durability analysis for any components for any component you want in the system. So here are um, just a brief uh, overview of uh, what you can do, a part of um, what you can do using uh, atoms in the heavy equipment industry. And some of the reasons why engineers are leveraging such a modern technology tool to study their uh, equipment. So first. Um, it correlates very well with the physical test if you can create the model in a, in a correct way. And, and when you have a high fidelity model that you can trust, it will definitely help reduce the um, physical test number of, number of physical tests of the new design by leveraging this um, existing virtual prototype. Um, so a very important 
important factor here is that you want to create your model in a very correct way and uh, correlate very well with the physical test. And that's why you need uh, some, in some scenarios. For example, when you're handling the bulk material, you want uh, the interactions between the material and the bucket as realistic as possible. That's uh, why we kind of um, set up this webinar in the first place. We want to give you an idea how you can uh, very uh, precisely capture those kind of uh, effects or the interaction between those materials and the bucket. Some um, companies, uh, here is a logo slide with some, um, some of our best customers around the world. Uh, as we know, 24 out of the top 25 automotive OEMs are using atoms in their um, R&D processes. And we have a um, lot of customers in the heavy equipment industry as well. Here's a uh, brief uh, a case study just to show you what, you what people usually do. So in this um, scenario, in this model, um, the boom of this electric shovel is made flexible. So what it does is that uh, it basically allows you to um, not only predict uh, the deformation, uh, but also the stress and strain of that boom in this uh, system model. And uh, in the same time, you can use uh, the existing results you get from this um, the dynamic loading of this boom throughout one range of motion and use that as the input results for you to do some of the subsequent uh, fatigue analysis in other kind of uh, durability or fatigue software. Um, in this scenario, you can see here we are also giving you the option that you can, um, with this um, Adams and EDM post simulation, which Steve will, Stephen will talk about in detail later, you will be able to accurately also predict the load between the bucket and either the dirt or the stones, any kind of bulk materials you want. And that loading is actually also impacting um, how the system perform uh, the rest, um, in the rest of the, the product. So that interaction alone is not only important for um, the bucket, but also for the rest of the system. So it will, um, to some extent, increase uh, the overall performance or accuracy of your simulation. Okay, uh, and uh, at this point, I'm going to pass the presenter to Stephen. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, I've made you the, the presenter, Stephen. Okay. Uh, can you just come, you can see my slide, please? Yes, I can see it. Excellent. Well, I'll continue on with the, the challenges and the design of bulk material handling equipment. So there are a lot of challenges and design decisions that have to be made when developing bulk material handling equipment. A lot of these challenges will arise from the material equipment interactions. For example, the challenges of dealing with moving structural loads while maintaining the equipment durability. If we look at a few of these challenges, such as uh, the vibration, the noise, or the performance, for example, different manufacturers will want to show that their equipment will outperform the competition. With the durability, for example, we we'll want to know, does this equipment last within different operating environments? Or maybe if we look at the control systems, how do the control systems work with different materials? And how do these handle, say, sticky and cohesive materials? Well, this is um, a challenge that we um, have to address. So when designing the equipment such as the excavator here in the top left or the drag line bucket or an auger conveyor system, we want to address the challenges I mentioned previously and optimize the performance of the equipment. All of these machines are designed to handle bulk materials such as the soils, rocks, ores, uh, big clays and grains as well. The designer has the challenge that the physical properties and the characteristics of these materials will vary, vary greatly. 
on the right of my screen here, we've got a small selection of materials. And visually, we can see that these few materials vary in their physical characteristics, their density. We know that their flow properties will change. And even within one material type, the properties would change from location to location. So these differences impact on how the material interacts with the equipment, the forces that it imparts, and consequently how the machine's structure and its integrated series of control systems, and say its hydraulics, would then deal with these inputs. Being able to predict the loads and forces on the equipment is key to optimizing equipment performance and durability. When using MBD software, engineers typically either have to estimate um, the, the loads or have to rely on one physical test, which typically is limited to a single type of material and a maneuver. On the left here, we've illustrated the approach of approximating the point loads. This method has the advantage of a relatively simple setup uh, the loads can be applied directly to the model. However, with this method, it's not a validated or an accurate way of representing the materials. So it's especially true for complex and cohesive materials. An alternative way would be to integrate the MBD simulation with a physical test. Experimental data can be integrated into the simulation and produce more accurate and realistic loads, can represent complex ground materials. However, creating an experimental run is a costly and a time-consuming process, uh, typically restricted to one material and one motion. You also, of course, have to actually build the design that you're interested in testing. How then can we get accurate loads for complex materials and different equipment operating conditions? So this uh, I'll introduce the capabilities of EDEM. Uh, this enhances the value delivered by the MBD software. So EDEM is our discrete element method software. It simulates bulk material behavior. It allows the designers to predict the bulk material flow characteristics of a wide range of materials and allows us to obtain realistic loads. So it provides engineers with the freedom to repeatedly test the performance of the equipment with different materials before physically testing it. An EDEM MBD co-simulation combines the benefits of both types of analysis to guarantee the optimum design solutions. By knowing the real material behavior and the loads which it applies on the equipment, assumptions and guesswork in the design process are minimized. The results of the co-simulation are improved quality of design due to a greater understanding of the material equipment interactions. This would be under a range of operating conditions. Additionally, the design time and the costs will be reduced because fewer physical prototypes have to be produced and tested. Examples of these would be shown here in the images. For example, WESTEC, who use EDEM um, and FEA analysis to optimize the structural design of their truck bodies. Or, for example, Hatch, who have used EDEM to troubleshoot the reliability issues and design changes for a problematic transfer chute system. Uh, VR Steel here on the bottom left have used EDEM MBD co simulation to design their dragline buckets. Materials themselves can come in an endless range of sizes, of shapes, and of properties. From the, the rocky limestone shown here in the top right, this may cause more problems with wear compared to, say, the fine, dry um, sand, um, as the individual rock lumps could damage the equipment. The finer materials, such as the sand or maybe the, the cohesive clay, are more likely to have um, flow problems and can be difficult to handle. This would be especially true if they were sticking to the equipment itself. All of the different material types can be implemented in EDEM. In the first video, it's showing rocky material. And in the videos, we're showing the path that moves through the materials. The second um, video here, we have a cohesive material. As the material sticks together, the book is a significantly greater than the rocky material alone. 
And in the third um, video on the base, we had the fine dry material. And we could see that as the video was playing, it was much more freely flowing material. Now, the different attributes of these materials, and so I highlighted the three different types here, rocky material, fine material, and sticky material. These influence the design of the equipment. Uh, of course, there's not just the three types of material. There could be, for example, three or more types of iron ore, and this could come from a single location, a single mine. These material properties would vary then with moisture content and behavior, for example, between summer and winter. When you extend this to dealing with different locations around the world and different material types, there is an endless variety of materials. It's very important, therefore, to understand the real material in order to simulate it. Understanding the real material properties, such as its density, shape, and size distribution, these are all very important, as is understanding the real material's bulk behavior, so that the simulation will then use a fit-for-purpose material model. So looking at the materials, in summary, EDEM provides the capability to model a wide range of different materials, from coarse dry rocks to fine cohesive powders, and also mixtures of different material types. So going back to the previous slide, um, we highlighted that being able to predict the loads and the forces acting on the equipment is key to optimizing the equipment performance and durability. We mentioned previously the two typical methods for using MBD in the design of bulk material handling equipment. The user can approximate the point loads or run through an experimental cycle to get the material forces. Introduction of the EDEM Adams. The user can run through this on the equipment, which is essentially a, a digital field test. The, the introduction of EDEM to the, the analysis allows for a wider range, a wide range of material types to be investigated. So the benefits of the coupling are shown here. Firstly, the realistic loads on the equipment. These loads can be due to the different material types. The loads are calculated in EDEM and they're passed to ADAMS uh, for use in the analysis. Additionally, with this coupling, all equipment maneuvers are possible. It allows the full design space to be explored. This doesn't require any equipment experimental test data to be included within the simulation. Now, this type of model is simple to set up uh, compared to an experimental run. However, with the introduction of higher fidelity computational modeling, the computational time does increase compared to a standalone MBD analysis. So to summarize the benefits of the EDEM Adams coupling provides a, a critical capability. The ability to model and visualize the dynamics of the equipment movement and examine how loads exerted by the granular material are distributed throughout the mechanical system. So the EDEM MBD co-simulation benefits original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, as they regularly use the structural mechanics software for effective design of heavy equipment when handling or processing bulk materials. So this is critical to the mining, the off-road construction, um, forestry and agricultural industries. In each of the applications I've shown here, the purpose of the equipment is to handle the bulk materials. The example in the top right again is from VR Steel. And the typical benefits of this type of simulation are to investigate the different design types and look at the wear on the equipment, the filling methods and the filling rates. The filling of such a large bucket such as this has significant impacts on cost and time. Small improvements in the percent fill per cycle can result in significant improvements in productivity. For the bucket simulation image, it's used to present, represent the construction equipment area. In EDEM, we're simulating the bucket and the material interaction with this. 
In Adams, the bucket can be connected to the rest of the machine and the users of the EDAM Adams coupling can investigate the full system performance. For example, how does the engine perform due to different loading conditions? How should the hydraulics be set up for cohesive materials versus rocky materials? Through the Adams solver, the fuel efficiency due to operating the buckets in different materials could, for example, be investigated. The agriculture machinery area can also be used to look at similar types of analysis. In this case, we can look at um, soil tool interactions. For example, the tool's ability to flatten the soil or the force required to run the tool through the different materials. And this can also be investigated. If we look at the VR case in a bit more detail, two tools, uh, a first generation a taper bucket and a second generation taper bucket. Uh, this coupled simulation enables to compare the mass inside the bucket over the time. This is information from each and also the force required to drag buckets and information atoms. Um, normalizing this VR can optimize a bucket to provide the and characteristics while minimizing the drag force. The valuable data was a drive the conceptualization of what is now known as the second generation taper bucket. Okay, so far we've introduced the need for EDEM MBD coupling and highlighted some examples of this. In the following section, I'm going to show the EDEM Adams coupling and highlight an example workflow. The basis of this is that EDEM simulates a bulk material and then passes the forces and the torques from the material to the equipment section in Adams. In turn, Adam simulates equipment motion using any dynamics control systems that have been set up, for example, the hydraulics or the pneumatics, and it returns the velocity and the position of the equipment back to EDAM. The new position and velocity is based on the response of the equipment to the material loading and to any other applied loads from Adams. So how do EDAM and Adams communicate. Uh, one of the things that is needed is the EDEM coupling interface and um, currently EA Link. EA Link is a prototype coupling developed by DM Solutions distributor uh, Heike Technologies. EA Link is a plugin which handles exchange of data between EDEM and Adams. It's um, fully integrated into the Adams menu bar. So EA Link is a, a prototype solution. And as a next stage for this, DM Solutions and MSE Adams are currently in the development phase for a formal co-simulation platform. So I'll show you uh, an example of the, the setup of this, um, these coupled simulations. EDEM is shown here on the left. And at the end of the webinar, I'll highlight a little bit more about the, the setup of EDEM. But to, to summarize it, it's set up as a simple box, and the box is going to be filled with material after one second of simulation. Uh, to couple to Adams, we need to open our EDEM model and start the EDEM coupling server. This defaults to the waiting for connection status, it means it's waiting for Adams to provide information such as a runtime and also the piece of equipment, um, the box, which is to be controlled by Adams. The Adams model is shown on the right. And is also the same simple box, but in this case attached to a spring. Currently, both of these simulations have been set up in their separate programs. And in the following slides, I'll introduce EA Link and show how these two programs will run um, while coupled together. Um, the EA Link installers run from an executable installer package. And once it's installed, it, we go to the Adams plugin manager and choose to show EA Link. 
so it's a setup in this case which um, only needs to be done um, once. And here we can see the EA link interface. So I'll just um, run through this. Um, and this is the same process that we go through for, for the, um, the EDEM Adams coupling as well. The first thing we need to do is um, either export our geometry, our equipment from Adams and import it into EDEM. In the simple example here, we've already set up the, the box and it's waiting to be coupled to Adams. So it's not necessary in this step. What we then need to do is link the two programs together. So we need to choose which bit of equipment are we coupling from EDEM to Adams. In this case, we can choose a one-way or a two-way link. A one-way link would be where the equipment is moved in EDEM from Adams, but there's no material force feedback influencing the motion. For a two-way link, the material loads in EDEM impact on the equipment motion in Adams. So this screenshot is from the simple spring box example. We've got our model, which is a rectangular box attached to a simple spring, and the user has chosen just to couple the box EDEM via a two-way link. The material will interact with the box in Adams, and Adams will then consequently calculate the response due to the material loads and the spring properties. <clears throat> I'll show a more advanced example a bit later in the webinar, highlighting an excavator um, coupling to multiple different elements in EDEM. So once the, the equipment has been set up in both EDEM and Adams, and the two programs have been linked together, we just um, need to set the the run settings. In this case, we're running for five seconds with a time step of 0 0.002 uh, seconds. There are a few different options here, so we can check the model is set up and set up OK. And then we just need to, to run or to stop and, and reset the simulations. Uh, but to, to summarize, there are three main steps. We want to identify the equipment section that we are to out a couple. We want to choose a one-way or two-way coupling. Then we want to set the, the run time. So now we're ready to run and launch the EDEM Adams co-simulation. The example of the spring box running EDEM Adams. The top video shows EDEM. Initially the box drops due to its weight, um, but it's in equilibrium by the spring force from atoms. Once the material is introduced, which is a new lower equilibrium position due to the bit of weight, the video um, at the base here is showing the same simulation from us. We can see the spring length change over time. On the EM, we're simulating the material and the equipment this material interacts with. In terms, we're simulating the equipment and its corresponding dynamic systems. Um, in this case, it's by the spring. And in this case, the same as an elimination um, for this spring to the material weight. So the second example is an excavator is shown in the image here. As before, the first step is to choose a section which is to be coupled to EDEM. In this case, we can see parts such as the boom has been coupled and the, the bucket, for example. And there's uh, lots of different parts in the excavator, so uh, many of these parts have been chosen to be coupled um, between EDEM and Adams. Now, in terms of the materials, DM Solutions provides a generic EDEM material model database, uh, which is referred to as the GEM. Uh, this has thousands of different materials. Um, firstly, I chose a low cohesion material, a low moisture material. 
Um, and as can be seen from the image here on the left, um, but actually let's look at the image in the middle. Uh, the material is filled into a cylinder and the cylinder is lifted up. The final position is shown here on the left. And as can be seen, the low moisture material creates a relatively low angle of repose. A second material was chosen from the GEM database and it has a, a higher moisture content, a higher cohesion. And this creates a relatively higher angle of repose when unloading. Now with this excavator example, two simulations have been created. Um, the two simulations are identical to one another, apart from the material model which is used. In the slide here, we're showing the simulation results. Um, firstly, within the simulation, the bed of material was created, and this was done for both material types. Uh, in, initially, the bed was colored by um, different bands. It's just a material coloring. The material is the same throughout. Um, it just shows that as we're passing through the simulation, how the material position is changing. The simulation which is shown here is for the cohesive material, the, the high moisture material. If I move on to the next slide, I see an animation. And this shows the results from EDA is for the less cohesive material. The material bed was defined in EDA and the moon has been controlled by Adam. The material forces have been passed to Adams during the simulation, and the material forces and the positions have been calculated in Eden. At the simulation, the bucket unloads onto the, the ground here, um, but a second or third run through the same material bed could be to investigate the different phases and maybe even a different type of motion. If we compare the two simulations side by side, as I said, we have the same um, equipment in both cases, a very similar material, um, so the same size distributions, other than we had a, a low cohesion, a low moisture, and a high cohesion material. Visually, there are some differences in the, the simulation. For example, we can see the higher moisture material um, has been um, moved up further in the material bed. And when we're looking at the, the numbers, the higher cohesion model unloads 4,500 kilograms of material, and the lower cohesion model, uh, 4,100, uh, due to the material uh, sticking together and clumping during the, the process. Also, if we look at the force or the pressure on the, the bucket in this case, uh, the model starts um, initially at zero. This is due to the material force being zero at the start of the simulation. And as the bucket interacts with the material, the force or the pressure on the bucket increases. The two to seven second uh, time period here shows the actual digging process. Um, the weight of the material in the bucket produces a significantly higher pressure on the bucket than, the, say, the actual digging process. In this case, the higher cohesion material shows a greater resistance, which is shown by a pressure and a force which is 30% higher than the zero cohesion or the low cohesion material. Uh, you get some material um, sticking to the, the bucket in the, the high cohesion, the high moisture content case during the loading process. So in this case, we were just highlighting some of the analysis that can be done with the EDEM MBD co-simulation. This analysis includes the realistic material force imparted on the equipment uh, from the material. The force is representative of the conditions simulated. Different operating conditions, of course, would produce different um, force results. So in summary, the EDEM Adams co-simulation um, provides an integrated multi-physics simulation capability for engineering design and analysis within equipment manufacturing. EDEM calculates the material forces on the equipment 
for the multi-body dynamic simulation. And the coupling with MSC Adams provides new insights into equipment material interactions, allowing for optimized equipment design, reduced physical testing, reduced design to market, and improved design quality. If we look at the, the next steps, I've highlighted the EA link, um, the EDEM Adams link, but we're in the process of formalizing the EDEM Adams co simulation interface too. So um, at this point, Ejen, shall I show the EDEM interface and the setup of the EDEM model? Yeah, I think briefly showing that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully you can see my EDEM simulation. And this is to introduce you to the EDEM interface, interface and the excavator simulation that we've highlighted during the webinar today. EDEM comes in three main tabs, a creator, a simulator, and an analyst. And the creator is where we set up our coupled simulation, or the, uh, the material for our coupled simulation. In this case, of course, the simulation has already been set up, but I'll highlight you through the, the equipment and the material inputs. I mentioned briefly that EDEM provides the material model um, for the realistic um, material forces on the equipment. We also have a generic EDEM material model database uh, where you can download an appropriate material model um, which is defined by its bulk material properties. If I highlight the material here on the screen, um, this is the material model which has been input for this case. A material model consists of the interaction properties, the physics models, the particle shape, and the, the particle and material size distribution. We start with the interaction properties. We can see for this material type that we have the, the restitution and the friction values, uh, the density, the shear modulus, material are set up. This is a, these are the values which I've downloaded from the GEM database based on its um, bulk material properties. I mentioned that the material model includes a, uh, includes a physics. And in this case, for cohesive material, we've used the hertz mendelin with JKR physics model. The material itself um, has particle shape. And again, the particle shape was defined by the material that was in the, the database. And in this case, it's defined by a three-sphere uh, particle. For different types, you could have different shapes defined by their spheres and their positions. Uh, but in this case, the, the appropriate shape is this um, three-sphere as shown. Our material model, we want to introduce it to our simulation. The shade green area here, the green box, is where we want the material to be introduced. We use what we term as factories within EDAM to introduce the material. So we've chosen to fill this box with our material. And as you can see, the, the material's already been pre-filled in this case, and the, the equipment is there. For when filling the material um, into this area, we also consider the material properties, for example, its size distribution of the material. Once we have our material model set up, we want to input the equipment from Adams. In this case, the equipment was provided by by Adams as a CAD file, and so just simply choose the, the file which has already been created and import this. There are lots of different file formats, file types, 
available input. Of course, I will put this right now as the equipment is already defined here in, in the simulation. Uh, so that's really the, the main parts of the setup. I've downloaded my material, um, which has been defined by its interaction properties. We've assigned the physics model in order to get the cohesion. We've input the predefined shape, and we've introduced the material and imported the equipment to our simulation. Now for a non-coupled simulation, I'd move to the simulator, or we'd run the, the simulation. For the EDAM Adams co simulation, we're using a coupling server. If I start the coupling server, it's now waiting for a connection. This means it's waiting for Adams to provide the inputs to the equipment, so the motion, and so on. I'll quickly move on to the analysis side within EDAM. This is where we can look at the analysis of our material and the material properties. I've chosen a point here where the simulation has already been run for a, a few seconds, so we can see the bucket going through the equipment. We're using the clipping tool to get a slice through the, the material in this case. So we simulated the full material bed. We enabled this plane just so I can show you the, the highlights of the, the material itself. The material is currently colored by these different bands, and that's to show the, the flow of the material. If I remove this, under here I have the material colored by its velocity. And I should also show the legend for this as well. So the material here is shown by its velocity, gray being zero, which is the majority of the material bed, and red being the high velocity material, which is typically around the, the bucket itself as it's been picked up. Now there are a lot of different analysis methods available. So share the material through um, very briefly, and the material here is colored by its velocity. I can choose any of the other properties here. Use the force on the equipment, uh, the force on the material. You can see here the, the interaction of the, the bucket and how it's imparted the, the force onto the, the material, the force response of the material. Now, of course, that force goes two ways. The bucket is imparting a force on the material, and the material is imparting a, a force onto the, the bucket. Now, within EDEM, you can also do the analysis of the, the forces on the equipment. However, for that, it's a, a good point maybe to pass you back to Ejun, uh, who can show you the results of the simulation and the okay. response back in Adams. Thank you, Steve. Stephen. Before I take back the control, just uh, want to point out one thing that um, you don't need to have, um, you don't need to simulate all the components in the EDEM uh, environment. In this example, um, the real simulation in this EDEM environment is between the bucket and the material. The other, the rest of the system is uh, we have uh, we have it in EDEM just for visual uh, representation. So uh, that actually came from one of the, one of the questions uh, from the audience. So I think um, Widely choose uh, what kind of a model you want to simulate in the EDAM and what you want to simulate in Atoms will definitely help you increase your fidelity while main relatively maintaining uh, the calculation efficiency. So uh, again, if you are interested in that uh, solution, please uh, send us an email. We will have our email uh, listed in the, at the end of the presentation. So send us an email, we will have our application engineer working with you to help you evaluate your system performance using this code simulation. And um, now I'm just gonna take back the control and uh, briefly show you what's going to be 
available for you on the atom side after the co-simulation. So basically after the co-simulation is done, um, the atoms results file will be generated. So here is the atoms model with the boom made flexible to you know account for the deformation of this um, flexible boom in the equipment and also in the co-simulation. Um, at the end of the co-simulation, I will just uh, go ahead and uh, import the results file uh, with this um, simulation results. And then I can see not only the animation, but also get um, the, the plot curves for different kind of uh, like forces, um, tor force and torques, uh, velocity accelerations for any component that you want in the system. And on, on the left-hand side, you can see we are actually, um, so the force between the bucket and the material is uh, converted into a what we call the general force acted on the bucket. And that force uh, are actually impacting the dynamic performance of the rest of the system. So in this way, we're um, seamlessly connecting the benefits of um, EDAM simulation with the um, high efficiency calculation uh, with atoms in the entire uh, system performance of the vehicle, of the equipment. We're combining those together. And you will get a very uh, realistic result of the dynamic loading, not only on the bucket, but also on the rest of the system. And also, if you want to couple another uh, like hydraulic system or a control system into the simulation, that's also um, possible. It's also doable, basically. And uh, that is um, some of the results you will get in the general, in the traditional atoms um, environment after the, the co-simulation. And uh, we are currently, uh, like Stephen mentioned, we're currently working on a, um, so MSC software is working with uh, DEM solutions um, on a co-simulation tool, which will basically enable you to perform this co-simulation uh, between the EDEM and uh, ADAMS, um, similar to this EA link, but we will take it to the next step. We will make it part of the product. And uh, that is um, that tool will be available in a few months. So if you are interested in trying out this tool, or if you are interested in being a beta tester, um, please send an email to either me, Ejun, or Steven. We will definitely work with you in the near future to help you uh, validate your system using this co-simulation tool. And uh, if you have uh, any question for this web uh, webinar or for those two uh, different technologies or for the co-simulation, please type the questions down in the Q&A window. We will try to have them answered either during uh, the next 10 minutes or we will follow up with you uh, via email.